Okay, so I'm going to scroll all the way down to this string example that we had written previously. As a reminder, at the start of the string example method, we did create a new scanner object. We sort of referenced to that in the local variable s. So we're going to continue to use that scanner today. We can just keep using the same scanner object as we prompt the user. So the concept that was introduced yesterday is what we call a short circuit. So we're going to add this right to the end of this method. Let's write the code first, and then we'll go back and add a comment that explains it. So as a reminder, um, just to back up a little bit, we had asked the user to enter a couple of strings. Uh, we had then, we wrote some code here to determine which string comes first lexicographically based on the compare to method. But it's possible that the two strings are equal. Um, in which case, first string will still have a value of null. So let's say we want to check if whichever string comes first has a length that is um, greater than three characters. We could write a line of code like this. If first str.length is greater than three, system.out.println the first string has more than three characters. There's a problem with this. Let me demonstrate the problem quickly and then I'll come right back to the code. The problem is if I an answer my two words and they're the same, my program crashes. I get a null pointer exception on this highlighted line of code. A null pointer exception means I am calling a method, in this case length, on a variable, in this case first str, and that variable has a null value. We can't call a method on a variable with a null value because a null value means there is no object. I can't ask for the length of the string if there is no string. Okay. I can take advantage of Java's short circuit behavior to check that first string is not equal to null before I call the length method. So I can update this line of code to say if first str is not equal to null, and first str.length is greater than or equal to three. At first glance, you might be like, well, we're still calling the length method on first str, which could still have a value of null. But because of this behavior of Java, that will never happen. So let's capture why. The why here is super important. This is an example of what we call a short circuit. Here's what we mean by a short circuit in this case. If the left operand, this part, is false, the right operand, this part, will not be evaluated. That code will not even run. Why? Well, it's, it's a performance optimization thing because the AND operation is already false. So Java is efficient. If Java knows that this entire condition is going to be false simply by because the left operand is false, then it's not even going to bother executing the right operand. Because with the AND operator here, in order for the entire condition to be true, the left side and the right side both have to be true. So if the left side is false, it doesn't matter if the right side is true or not. Let's not even execute the code and let's just move on. Okay? We're using that behavior here to our advantage because we, we don't want to and can't have the highlighted code, the right side execute, if first str is null because we'll get that null pointer exception. So we're actually taking advantage of Java's short circuit behavior here 
to avoid the null pointer exception. And you'll see code writ structured like this a lot. This is a really common technique. So this is how we use it to our advantage. Sometimes this behavior can be a little unexpected. So let's, let's add more to this method. Um, let's prompt the user for some additional information. System.out.println, or let's just do print. Enter your favorite, or enter your two favorite fruits. And let's say if they specify that one of their two favorite fruits is a kiwi, we're going to be like, hey, me too. Okay? So let's check that. So we'll say if s.next, that reads the next word as a string from the terminal, it returns a reference to a string, so I can immediately call equals on that if I want. We haven't done this a lot, but if a method returns a reference to an object, we can immediately do dot in another method call and call a different method on that object. You can chain together several methods if you want. It gets confusing at some point. This doesn't seem so bad, but just, uh, so just watch out. So if s.next.equals kiwi, or, so that reads the first word, let's read the second word. s.next reads the second word, returns a reference to a string, dot equals kiwi. So if that or that is true, we're going to print. And you can change the message or the fruit to your liking. Kiwi is one of my favorites, too. Excellent. Let's ask another question. Let's ask the user, enter your favorite ice cream flavor. Flavor. And we'll store that in a local variable called flavor. So I'll do s.next to get that ice cream flavor. And then let's print it back to the user favorite ice cream flavor. There we go. So a couple extra questions. What are your two favorite fruits? Let's see if one of them's kiwi. If so, print out a message saying that we like kiwis too. Let's ask about the ice cream. Read what their favorite ice cream flavor is. Print that out as well. This is a lot like code that we wrote in the last unit with the addition of an if statement to like check their input and respond appropriately to it. If you're still typing, pause for just a moment. I'll switch back to this in a second and watch what happens when I run the program, though. If I run this program, I still got to type in my turkey stuff here. It says, enter your two favorite fruits. All right. Um, let's say kiwi and banana. Banana. Enter. Kiwi is one of my favorites, too. Okay, that seemed to work. Enter your favorite ice cream flavor. It didn't even let me enter anything. It just printed out that my favorite ice cream flavor is banana. I assure you, my favorite ice cream flavor is not banana. If that's yours, that's cool. I'm not judging. Um, just not for me. Um, this program didn't behave as I expected. I didn't even get to enter my favorite ice cream flavor. And now I'm stuck with banana ice cream. The reason why has to do with the way Java handles this OR operator here. So let's add another comment right here explaining what's going on. This is another short circuit example. But this one involves the OR operator. How does it work with the OR operator? Well, if the left operand is true, meaning if the first string entered is kiwi, like it was in my case, the right operand 
will not be evaluated. This highlighted code will not even run. What that means is s.next is never called. It never read in banana at this point. The next time s.next is called is way down here, and the next word to read was banana. That's what was sitting in the terminal. So it read banana and stored it in flavor instead of letting me type in a new ice cream flavor. Why does Java behave this way? Well, it behaves this way because the OR operation is already true. Again, this is a performance optimization. With the OR operator, if the left operand is true, it doesn't matter what the right operand is. The whole condition here is going to be true regardless. So let's save time and not even execute this. That's great for efficiency, but just keep this in mind because this may result in a bug if the first word is Kiwi. So just something to be aware of, a potential pitfall here. How would we fix this? Well, we could create two local variables, fruit1, fruit2, assign the, do the s.next call outside of the if statement, and then just do the comparison with the local variables inside the if statement. That would ensure that the s.next gets called regardless of, of the values.